Good Wednesday afternoon, Mark Evans of Philadelphia. Let's go all the way down to the bubble in Miami, Florida, where I have former cruiserweight, light heavyweight contender turned top trainer, Sean George. George is in Miami. He's got his undefeated heavyweight, Jang Jalei. Or Jalei. John Jalei. John Yeah, Jalei. Yeah. He just told me his name, and, and, and I still <laughs> botched it up. It's okay, man. It's cool. So what's been going on with you? Obviously, we a lot of fans know you. You were in a lot of fights on ESPN, coming up as a contender. You know, in the mid two th- like uh, early early to mid two thousands. Uh, what have you been up to? Uh, how long have you been with these uh, these uh, fighters uh, from China? Um, after I retired, um, my manager, we all know Lou Duva. Mm-hmm. Um, he introduced him to the Chinese national team um, when it was amateurs, and so um, I ended up going back to China. I ended up working with them for the two thousand twelve Olympic Games, and then um, I started my coaching career there. So when I came back here um, to the United States, you know, they asked me to work with them. And so I started to work with them, both Jale and, and Fen Long. And he's talking about Fen Long Mang, who's the number one ranked IBF light heavyweight contender in the world, who uh, was supposed to fight Art or Better Bia, but for whatever reason, the fight that fight didn't happen. It might be, you know, we'll get to that in a second, but what you just told me could be revisited somewhere down the line. So, um, Talk about it. You know, obviously, you grew up you, from Brooklyn. You know the 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 Brooklyn, the American style of fighting. How? What's the difference between you know maybe the the Chinese style of fighting, uh, in terms of like their amateurs? You know, when you got these two young men, to uh, you know what you were used to as an amateur and a young pro. It was definitely a learning experience. Um, these guys. You have to think that in China, boxing is very new. It's a brand new sport to them. When I was an amateur boxer, if you would have said something like, um, you're fighting in China, I wouldn't have thought twice about it. If I find in Cuba or Russia, you wake up, you get ready, you, you get energetic. But um, but yeah, but it's a learning experience. Like they, it's a style difference. Like they don't know, like a lot of these guys didn't even know how to throw a jab. They didn't know how to hit, they didn't know how to hit a heavy bag. They didn't know how to hit the doubling bag, you know. So all these things you had to teach them. Um, so I think they come along pretty well. It was a learning experience for me and for those and for Jalei and Fanlong as well. You spent several years over in China, living there, uh, not getting to know these guys, getting to know the the way of life there. What, what was that all? About? How was that? It was it was interesting. It was fun. It was. It's, listen, I'm a person that. I'm, I could be comfortable anywhere in the world. I could be in Brooklyn. I could be in Gates Avenue in Best Eye, Brooklyn. I could be in Marquette, Michigan. I could be in Beijing, China. I could be in Moscow, Russia. I'm comfortable everywhere, you know? So learning different cultures, learning other, learning different things is a big thing. Is is um, is, I like it. It's a good experience. And I, I know obviously they, they, they've been here a while and what was it like for them the first time you brought them to the gyms in New York and Brooklyn like that? How much like kind of culture shock was that for them in terms of the way, uh, you know, the, 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 the all the hustle and bustle going on inside the gyms? And uh, they were probably used to a, a system of very um, discipline, kind, yeah, like a discipline yeah. kind of system. And not that it's not discipline in Brooklyn or anything, but, but it's you know, a little bit more loosey-goosey, especially on this side of, of the pond. It's, it's, it's the environment is different. It's like um, in China that we in New York we have boxing gyms. It's a city. People come in and out. Some people use it as a hobby. Some people um, try to become an amateur boxer, successful. Some people just do it just for the workout, you know. And some people turn professional. In China, they have boxing schools. Um, they have a go. It's, it's government supported and everything else. So like when a coach walk in, everybody's lined up, straightened up. Um, it's different. But it's it's fun to. It's a culture. It's a whole. So when I brought them down to the gym, when I had them down in the gym, they're just looking around like, "Wow, this is different," you know. So they had to learn how it was a culture shock for everybody. Jale got got it quickly. It took fan long more time, but it it works out. These are two, and I know um, there's a featherweight champion, Khan Zhu, who's also from China. The United States here, we feel that, you know, we get great athletes out of the 335 million people that live here in the United States. There's billions of people over there. 
do you see that that market not only not on tap because it's starting to get tapped a little bit but even more endless possibilities and then maybe here in the states not only with just boxing but maybe other sports as well china market when it comes to the sport of boxing it's like they, they shown july fight saturday night on national television um it's this is 1.3 billion people in china you know the market is is untapped, but is you had Joshi Ming, you had the, the you had a lot of different other fighters that mm-hmm. was there, you know. So, yeah, they, right now Jalei's talking about oh, they're talking about Jalei's fighting at the Bird's Nest in Beijing. Um, sponsors are calling Jalei now. The fight fans are coming in. Like, there's a lot of things. All all Jalei needed was a, a a network to put him on, and China's going to support him. The the whole country. I guess the, the question I, I guess I was trying to get to was, in terms of the amount of potential boxers. Obviously, like you said 1.3 oh, billion yeah, compared yeah. to 335 million. It, it, do you see, you know, if there's, you know, 50 people in a gym here in the United States, you is there are like hundreds of potential fighters and potential boxers in gyms in China now. There's a lot of talent in China, men and women. Um, Women, the women boxing scene is is phenomenal. If you look at the amateur program right now, you look at China. China's like in in, in the top five in every weight class, and and it's skilled boxers. Um, men boxers, they have a lot of potential out there. Like junior middleweights, the lighter weight classes, um, the junior middleweights, the welterweights, the junior welterweights. There's a lot of talent out there. Yes. And how about the, the boxing, the, the the mainstream boxing over here? He, he, obviously, he's fighting on a big card with Canelo Alvarez. They're showing that, you know, you said they're showing the fight on the big network over in China. Do they know who Canelo Alvarez is over there? Yes, um, he's a big superstar. Everybody, he's a he's a world star. Like everyone knows him. Yeah, they know. They, everyone know Anthony Joshua. Everyone know who Tyson Fury is. Um, they're black. They're fight fans out there. And you use a good segue here. I know there was a there was an article or a little news item a couple of weeks ago of, about how I guess Jang said that um, a potential heavyweight championship fight in China would be absolutely massive in terms of I know there. I mean, I went to Macau and I know it's different. I know one's mainland, one's not. But there's yeah. there's a lot of money there to 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 back. A, a potential event like that is that what what you got in the and obviously you speak to a lot of people there is so that... the money's there the money is always there you know china they're, they're willing to spend on sports the sport of boxing um they're behind jule um so i don't think that's ever going to be a problem it's just come it's just eddie got one half eddie hearns has to needs to come down and you know make make some kind of deal with them with his own and those guys you know but China's willing and able to do it. So can you see uh, he's 22-0, and 0, and he's fighting Jerry Forrest, and we'll get in that, into that in a second, fighting Jerry Forrest on, on Saturday. Can you see, I, I know he's ranked pretty high. I believe in the, is it the WBO he's ranked the highest, he, I think? He, yes, WBO. Um, he's ranked, what is he, I think he's ranked number 10. Okay. As of right now, as number, um, at the WBO. Um, I haven't been checking the rankings in the, over the past year. This pandemic hit. Yeah. <laughs> My focus has been solely on, solely on making sure Jale is right for this fight. You know, we're taking Jerry Forrest seriously, but we we do want the bigger names. We do want to fight. We we were hoping we won't get a bigger name on this fight card. Jale wanted to fight the bigger names: Herkovich, the, um, the Derek Cesaro. Um, you if you ask Jale who he wants to fight, it doesn't matter. If you give him a name, he goes, he's going to tell you, okay, you know. So, and he's been like this for years now. So it's not the reason why we're not finding a bigger name is not about Jale or or it's not about we we wanted to step up since we sixteen and all. So now that we signed with Eddie Hearns and he understands that, so we're looking for after this fight something bigger. You mentioned the pandemic. How difficult has it been? Uh, you know, probably Roy. I, you know, I know you're you you you're you're back in New Jersey in New York area. So yes. I I know it's you know numbers have been coming down the last few weeks and whatnot. But early in the pandemic, how difficult was it 
for you guys to get into a gym and do the things that you guys needed to do? Um, we've been in the, we've been in the gym. We was lucky to have the gym. We have okay. a private gym over in New Jersey. Um, the hardest thing was to get sparring down, yeah. you know, because we 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 really restrict with protocol. Yes, like everyone in the gym has to be COVID tested regularly, um, or you're not allowed in the gym, you know, and that's that's the biggest thing. And then believe it or not, believe it or not, some of the smart partners didn't want to take the COVID test. It's like it's one guy told me that he didn't believe in COVID. I was like, yeah. oh, dude, can you take the test? That's all you don't have to believe and just take the test. But yeah, um, for this fight though, we had some good sparring. So, uh, mutual good friend of ours, Ryan Sangalia, love Sean George, one of the true good people of boxing. Sean Ryan, that's watch, my guy. Watching watching this interview. Um, how many fights away do you? Do you I know you're not like you said you're not looking past Jerry Forrest. How, how many fights away do you feel you are to that? title shot title opportunity you, you mentioned you feel you're ready for those upper tier contenders the herjaviches the the Der jared to those kind of guys i saw that michael hunter and hergovich may fight in some kind of eliminator yeah. bout so i mean I, so, I mean how many fights away do you feel you feel but maybe one two one or two of those kind of fights and uh you know you'll be ready for the for the heavyweight championship of the world it's up it's up to eddie i want yeah. delayed names to, like the thing is People who don't know who John Jule is. So I want his name to get out there. I want people to understand who this fighter is. You have other people thinking, oh, maybe he's not as fast. Oh, maybe he don't punch as strong. His opposition his opposition is not that strong. So we want to make a name for ourselves. We don't we we not only want to fight for a world title, we want to win the world title. You know, so th there's a lot of politic politics that goes along with things. But we Whoever they want, whoever we want, whoever, it doesn't matter. It's up to Eddie to put us in the other game with those is people. Sat is Saturday night the beginning of that? You're fighting on a big stadium show, Canelo Alvarez, but, you know, a lot of eyeballs. Uh, how important is it not only to win, but to, to really make a statement, a, an emphatic knockout, a beat down, whatever? I mean, is that... You know, I know a lot of fighters and trying. We just want to get out, the, get out there with a win. But how important is for him to, to to score a big knockout on Saturday night? We're focused on winning, but also Jule knows that it's not only if you win; it's how you look when you win. You know, I don't know if you're going to get the credit we deserve after we get this fight because people are looking for Jule to fight bigger names and to step up. I was looking for a bigger name a much more of a step up for this fight. Um, but we're here with Jerry Forrest and we're going to handle our business. Jalei is excited. I'm excited. Fight, this is fight week and we just want to get in there and do our thing. Is it, is it a little bit different, like I said, being that it is a, a lot of eyeballs are going to be on this show all over the world. In China, you mentioned, and all over the world because of Canelo Alvarez. It means, is, is it a little bit different, like you said, how important it is the, or is it just another fight? That's a fight. Like, yeah. like, listen, like, Jalei, I've been around the boxing for a really long time. Yes, you have, yep. Right? Jalei's been around the boxing for, since he was 16 years old, mm -hmm. right? Jalei was want to fight. Listen, he don't care who you put in a ring with him, right? But now he's now he starting to realize that, okay, damn, I want to fight the top 10 the top 10 um contenders he wants to he wants those guys um it's just a fight you know what i mean you win you lose but we here to fight we here to compete and that's what and that's what i want to get get everybody to understand it's not that jaleigh doesn't want to fight these guys he wants to fight these guys yeah um break down the heavyweight division i mean it's obviously uh looks hey, give like me a name fury, give me well, well i'm saying it looks like fury and joshua may fight once or twice in the next year when things get Who's, yeah, Sean so we, George, so, who's Sean George picking in, in, in that uh, in those fights? And okay, in in Tyson Fury versus Joshua, Joshua. Anthony Joshua. Mm -hmm. I like both guys, man. I I like both styles. Um, I would like to see Anthony Joshua win the fight. I don't know that is that if that's going to happen or not. He's very capable of doing it. It's one of those fights where I, I want to see. What happens? I'm I'm going to rock with Anthony Joshua. Um, 
but Tyson Fury, six nine, um, almost three hundred pounds basically when he, when he stepped into that ring, the reach advantage that's hard to get over, and he's a moving heavyweight. There's a lot of, you know, and then people, and I think that um, Anthony Joshua doubts himself right now, you know, over his last two two fights that I watched when he fought Andy Ruiz the second time and when he fought um, Pulev, like he's 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 doubting himself in the ring. So we'll see what happens. And, and obviously, and I'll, I'll say, I know you probably doesn't, it, if Joshua wins, it becomes a little bit easier of a fight to make uh, for your guy too, being that they're yeah. both. With, that's with, why I, with that that's why I'm rooting for him. This is why I'm rooting for him. You know, it's, it's easier fight to make. Um, I think that, you know, so I wish, wish um, Rob McCracken, his coach, and um, Anthony Joshua well. I, I, I know, um, I'll get back to the China thing. I know you were a major amateur fighter, great pro fighter, and you've been, you've been all over the world. Did you pick up anything from the Chinese system that you incorporate into your, your daily training stuff that, that, you know, obviously you had a world of experience inside the ring, outside the ring, but then you go to China. Did you learn something that, that you now put in your bag of tricks in terms of uh, training methods? I learned, I learned a lot. Um, Listen, nothing I want to talk about. If you in the gym with me, actually, I got to invite you down to the gym one day. I'm, I'm in you Philly, know? so I'm not that far yeah. away. Okay, yeah, that's what I'm saying. We we up there sometime too, right? But um, yeah, you can come down to the gym, and you see. But we have different methods. We do different things. Um, my the key with me is just making adjustments according to what's happening, according to training. Mm -hmm. Um, don't make it boring, but you keep learning when you're doing things. Well, if you guys have been in Philly, uh, 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 Zhang and um, Fen Long, have, have they uh, have they had um, cheesesteaks yet when they came to Philly or no? <laughs> Not even it. Well, they, I mean, tradition. Um, Jule, he Jule experiment. He likes to experiment with food. Yeah. Fen Long, not he's he likes his Chinese food. <laughs> well, he probably doesn't like the Chinese food that that's over here. Over, no, this is a commercial. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. It's, it's fine. When I went to Macau. Uh, I love Chinese food. I I, yeah. I was looking for like uh, general chicken. No mean, yeah, yeah. yeah. For all that stuff, I'm like where They're is like it? what? That's like what? <laughs> they, no, that's they, not they, Chinese they, food. They, it's American they, food. They, no, they, I know that now. Yeah. I was I was like all excited. I'm like I'm gonna get authentic general Cho's chicken, and then it was even there. So uh, oh. last couple of questions. Uh, what do you want to say to the fans out there in closing uh, about um, you know your fighters uh, going forward? Anything you want to say about the fight on Saturday night? Um. February 27th, um, you could look it up on the zone, get the app, it's cheaper. Um, you could watch it on pay-per-view. Um, you could buy it on pay-per-view, it's gonna be there. Look out, listen, the main event, let's be serious, is about John Jale, not about Canelo Alvarez. At least in my mind, in my mind. I used to, when I used to say, uh, when I have fighters fighting on big cards, I'm like, oh yeah, that guy, hey, Pacquiao's the walkout bout. You, my, 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 exactly. My, <laughs> and uh, where do we find you on social media? Anyone want to touch you up? Maybe some, maybe, maybe, obviously, uh, fighters are always changing trainers all the time. Maybe, maybe, maybe they, maybe they yeah. need a new voice in there. And Sean George uh, could, could be their guy. How, how do we find you on social media? I'm on, I'm really hard on Instagram. So you find me Sean George 101 on my Instagram account. Um, Twitter, same, same Sean George 101. Those two. Yeah. There you have it. Very, very informative stuff. Uh, like I said, I've known you a, a while and always, uh, you always been, I, I remember very um, thoughtful answers every time I, I, I've talked to you. So I knew, I knew this yeah. would be a very uh, informative uh, get, guest spot here. And I, I appreciate the time. I, we're definitely going to have you back on. Anytime. Um, and, and, you know, uh, we're definitely def going to have you back on and we're going to follow the journey of, let me say it right, Jalei Jang. John. John, like J J O H N. John, okay. Yeah. I, I mean, I, it's fine. I thought I, I think I broadcasted a couple of his fights, and I was just pronouncing it phonetically the whole time. So. Yeah, yeah. Because everybody look at it, they say the same thing. They see the Z H. Yeah. So they say Zang, <laughs> Zang Zile. It's John Jule. Fen Long Mang, who will be fighting for the no, light. No, Mung. Mung. Jeez. Yeah, Mong. Yeah. <laughs> Fen, Fen, Fen Long Mong, who will be fighting for the light heavyweight championship, I would say sometime in the next 12 months. Is that fair to say? Yeah, it's fair to uh, say. He's very, he wants be, to. Um, he... 
And Beverly was fighting the guy you said who uh, Mongo BP. and Pete. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense to me. You know, business part of boxing doesn't make any sense. But um, is it is a thing that we beat Adam den- denies yes. for the number one spot? You know, so why is this guy getting a shot at the world title? Which I have an issue with that, but we'll see what happens. Yeah, and you said he's still ranked number one, so he will get a yeah. shot at some point. Yeah. And mm-hmm. like I said, we wish you best of luck with everything. We'll have you back on very soon, and uh, we'll see you Saturday night uh, in the corner uh, uh, of your of your undefeated heavyweight uh, contender and we'll we'll talk to you soon